A blessed and pleasant Saturday afternoon, moms and dads, boys and girls. Welcome to another edition of Children's Bible Minutes brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of Belize. Graffy Mookie and I are excited to be with you this here Saturday afternoon. Mm -hmm. It is Saturday and we hope you're enjoying your weekend. We're bringing this week off Bible Heroes 2 and N. Because mm -hmm. of course tomorrow we're looking at the Bible lesson for the Sunday. That's what we do on Sunday. And of course it's not going to be at 2.30. It's going to be at 4. Exactly. But today we're looking at our final Bible hero. And our Bible hero for today is a man by the name of Jeroboam. Now, after the death of King Solomon, King Solomon's son, Rehoboam, was supposed to take over. But Rehoboam was not a very good king and he did not heed God and he did not heed the counsel of the people who advised him or his father. And so God raised up a complete stranger who had a similar name, eh? rose up a complete stranger named Jeroboam to take over the kingdom. But I can't tell you more about that because they don't like it when I tell you the story ahead of time. So today, let us watch the story of Jeroboam and see what happens. And when we come back, we will carry on a conversation. Here we go. <laughs> story once again. Are you all ready for it? Oh yes! Let's go! Let's not waste any more time. Holy! Holy! Tell us a story! Oh yes! Of course I will! Today's story is about how the nation of Israel got divided. Solomon was the king of Israel, but he disobeyed God. God warned him that he will lose the position of the king if he continued disobeying him. So Solomon left all his kingdom and wealth to his son, Rehoboam, who did not honor God either. Rehoboam was such a terrible king that it led to the division of the kingdom into two parts, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Jeroboam was the son of one of Solomon's officials, and Solomon had put him in charge of some work, as he was a very capable boy. One day, a prophet came to him and tore his own robe into twelve pieces. Take ten of the pieces. He told Jeroboam, This is what God says. I will give you ten of the tribes of Israel. I will leave one tribe for Solomon's son and one for the sake of my loyal servant, David. This angered Solomon, and he tried to kill Jeroboam. But Jeroboam escaped to Egypt. When Solomon died, his son Rehoboam became the king of Israel, and he went to Shechem, where officials had gathered to crown him the king. The people of Israel, along with Jeroboam, went to speak to Rehoboam about the heavy taxes that were imposed on them by King Solomon. They requested him to lighten the load, and they would be his loyal subjects. Give me three days to think about it. Rehoboam responded. He took the situation to some of King Solomon's advisors, who advised him to do as per the demands of the people. This would ensure the loyalty of the people of Israel towards Rehoboam. But Rehoboam ignored their advice and did what the younger men told him to do. Tell them to stop complaining or else you will pile more taxes on them and need more labor. Three days later, when the people of Israel came to hear Rehoboam's response, they were upset. He had rejected all their requests. Rehoboam sent a man of his force to restore order and subdue the people into serving him. But the people of Israel stoned the man to death. The northern tribes of Israel refused to serve Solomon's son and made Jeroboam their king. This is exactly what God had planned and warned Solomon years before. 
Solomon should have obeyed God and simply listened to him. Then the nation wouldn't be divided. Hmm. Holy, what's today's question? Well, today's question is, who was made the leader of the northern tribes of Israel? Jeroboam! Excellent, Tubby! That was today's story. I hope you liked it. We'll be back soon. Until next time. To watch more videos, please subscribe. I loved that story. I love that story. And here is why I love that story. Okay, so all the way back to Solomon. Um, not Solomon. Well, hmm, 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 hmm. Solomon was a part of the story. But uh, Solomon, 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 Solomon. Remember that Samuel had anointed Saul king and then David took over from Saul. And when David died, David's son Solomon became the king. Mm -hmm. Solomon started out as a good king. Remember we spoke about him? Mm -hmm. Solomon start, started out as a good king, but then his heart turned away from God. And because his heart turned away from God, God had promised him that his kingdom was going to be divided. Now, when Solomon died, Solomon's son, Rehoboam, was supposed to become the new king. Mm -hmm. But remember, the prophet had gone to Jeroboam and tear his clothes into 12 and tell Jeroboam, take up 10 of the pieces. And this was an indicator, this was a sign that God was going to divide the nation of Israel, 10 kingdoms to the north who wanted to stay committed to God and two kingdoms to the south who were not in favor of following the laws of God. And Jeroboam, this new man that had worked for Solomon, mm -hmm, he had been a part of Solomon's place and was working for Solomon and did good in the sight of God. So God was going to give him the 10 northern kingdoms and give Rehoboam the last two because of the fact that he was David's grandson, Solomon's son. And just as the Lord prophesied, the people were having a hard time because the taxes that Solomon had put upon them was heavy. This is how Solomon stayed rich. And so the people had gone and Rehoboam was advised by his father's advisor, advised by the people around him. Listen, ease upon the taxes, my man. But instead he went to his friends and his friends said, nah, then he complained, tax them twice as hard. And he took the bad advice. And so that is what caused the nations to divide because he was not a good ruler. So you have one man who legally supposed to be the king, but isn't following God. And one man who isn't legally supposed to be the king, but doing what God wants him to do. And so the kingdom was divided. Ten led by God and Jeroboam. And two not led by God, led by Rehoboam. And what a story. And this division is going to be so bad and last for a long while. And people will come and fight with them. And because they're not united, the people will take some of them away and in all of it, God didn't leave them. God is going to raise up prophet after prophet to help them to recognize that they did wrong and to try to unify themselves and bring them back together. Because even in the midst of our confusion, even in the midst of our quarrel, God does not leave us alone. He is always there for us. You know why? Because ultimately, whether there is a northern kingdom and a southern kingdom, whether there is 10,000 human kings, Jesus is still king of everything. And we listened to this song on Wednesday when we spoke about the people wanting a king for themselves as Saul. But Mookie thought it was such a an awesome song that he thought he should bring it back for today because since the kingdom is divided into two he wants us to remember that no matter what the divisions is or the differences is between us we should be united under the banner of he who is the prince of peace jesus christ the king so let's listen to today's song jesus is the king Ruler over everything, Jesus is the one Promise from the Son of God, Jesus is the Lord He's the one you can't ignore Jesus, Jesus, He is the King He is the King He commanded the fishermen Hey, come follow me Jesus is the one, promise what the Son of God, Jesus. 
Jesus is the Lord. He's the one you gotta go. Jesus, Jesus, He is the King. that one we enjoyed that one indeed jesus is the king this week we have looked at a prophet a judge and several kings samuel the prophet samson the judge saul david solomon the king and then now two kings Rehoboam and jeroboam and in the whole thing the kings that followed behind the advice and took the trust and took and trust in God, they continued to do faithful and were successful. And those who chose to not follow God found themselves in problems and leading their people down a wrong path. Moral of this week, choose God above anything else. Serve him and allow him to lead you into what is right. We are out of time for today, but before we go, would you mind if we said a quick prayer? Excellent. Let us pray. Good afternoon, God, and what a beautiful Saturday afternoon it is. God, as we wrap up this week of looking at our heroes, we have come to understand that what we need to do to be good heroes for you is to follow where you lead, to do what you call us to do, to take your advice, and of course, to share your news with everyone else that they too could come and follow you. God, in the stories, we heard that those who turned their eyes and their minds and their hearts away from you ended up in trouble, and we don't want to be like that, God. Help us to keep all of our being fixed on you that you could lead where we are supposed to follow and help us to be willing to move our feet into the path that you will guide us. Send your blessing and your spirit upon us, God, to strengthen us that we could continue to trust in you all the days of our life. This is our prayer unto you through the name of your most precious son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, boys and girls, we had an awesome week looking at the Bible heroes and we have one final week, I think, of Old Testament heroes left. And then we will move into the New Testament to look at some of the New Testament Bible heroes. Mm -hmm. There are still a few more stories, of course, to go. So we look forward to that. But of course, tomorrow is Sunday, so we won't be on at 2.30. We'll be on at 4. And then on Monday, we will be back at 2.30. Until then, stay safe, stay home. And above all, don't forget that God loves you and we do too. Until next time, boys and girls, bye for now. <laughs>